All right, all right, all right. This is your host, Neil Britella, back with another live TikTok video. Good afternoon, everyone. As your brothers and sisters are coming into the live chat room, welcome. If you're a first time subscriber to the platform and to this channel, welcome. If you're a recurring subscriber and you've been here more than one time, you already know what it is. Welcome back. <clears throat> Give me a second. All right, um, we're going to talk about an interesting topic this afternoon in the body of Christ and Footwork Ministries. We're going to talk about milk and meat. What is the milk of the word and what is the meat of the word? And why is it important as a Christian to understand and comprehend? I know we got a lot of noise back there. Uh, let me say that one more time. The title of this video is called Milk and Meat, right? So you guys are going to get the meat of the word and the milk of the word in this one. You're going to understand what is the meat of the word and what is the milk of the word. Without further ado, let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for allowing me to come on here today to preach this word to the body of Christ. Father God, we pray that you will expound on what is the meat of the word versus the milk of the word for those who do not understand the difference between meat and milk. Father God, I pray that you help us to walk in righteousness and holiness in your ways. Father God, and not go back to the ways of the world. Father God, we ask for that hedge of protection over this video and over your message and over the messenger who's given this message. We pray that you protect your serve from any presumptuous sin, any pride, any error of the flesh. Father God, we pray that you protect the viewers from any errors that the servant will make in his flesh. Father God, we pray that um, this video is received on good soil and good ground and those who hear this message will receive this message in spirit and truth and that you will give them the understanding and revelation on how to properly address you, to how to properly serve you and to know the difference in their walk with you. Father God, we decree and declare this now in faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. Put an amen in the chat room, brothers and sisters, if you uh, understand the assignment. All right. Uh, give me a second. I see that the enemy is starting early today. All right. So let's get back to business. If you understand the assignment, put an amen in the chat room. Today's video, we're going to talk about the milk and the meat. Milk deals with elementary teachings, and we're going to get into that more as we talk about that. And the meat is for the mature, just for you guys and ladies to understand what is milk and what is meat. It's symbolic of your walk and fellowship with God. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 28, and we're going to start at verse 9 and verse 10. So anybody in the chat room want to put this in the chat room, put Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 to 10. I appreciate it. Now let's go to verse 9. It says, Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. I'm going to read it one more time for those who are coming in the chat room. Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 and 10. This is the Holy Spirit speaking through Isaiah the prophet. He says, whom shall he teach knowledge? So who will God teach knowledge to? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? The title of this video is called Milk and Meat. Milk is elementary doctrine. Meat is more mysteries of and revelations that come from the Holy Spirit pertaining to the doctrine of Christ. All right, so when he says, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and are drawn from the breast. These are for the mature Christian. Milk is for the elementary Christian, meaning you just got into the faith. You just, you just gave your life to Christ. You need to learn the basics and we're going to get into the basics of what that means. So when he says precept must be upon precept, precept is principles. 
things that we're supposed to learn in the body of Christ. Principles on how to live. <clears throat> Give me a second. Principles on how to live and conduct ourselves in the body of Christ. So when he says precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, meaning God reveals knowledge in time. God reveals revelation as you continue to fellowship with God. The more you learn about God, the more he reveals more about himself. The less time you spend with God, the less he's going to reveal him about himself to you. Where a lot of people, when they're stuck on the milk of the word, they, they rely on pastors and teachers and apostles to constantly keep feeding them the word. And that's the problem. God don't want you to just be a babe. He wants you to mature into adolescence. Put a one in the chat if you guys understand the assignment. Remember, Christ said he's coming back for a bride without what? Spot and wrinkle. If Jesus Christ said he's coming back for a bride, he's not coming back for a child. You start off in faith as a child, but as a child must mature into adulthood. So if you're a Christian, you just gave your life to Christ. Amen. Welcome to the faith. But you got to continue in the faith. That means you must ele you must elevate, you must graduate from elementary teachings into more sophisticated teachings of who Jesus Christ is. Right? A lot of you guys focus on Paul's teachings, but you don't understand that Paul's teachings is beyond your understanding because you have to grow in the faith in order to understand certain things that Paul is saying. Right? I, the book of Isaiah, which we just read, Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 to 10. This is Old Testament. This has to do with the, the prophets, right? What Paul does in the epistles, he explains Old Testament prophecies. He explains the law. He gives you the mystery of what God has hidden from mankind from the beginning of the world. These things are revealed to Paul to reveal to us who are in the faith, right? So Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 to 10, it says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? Knowledge got to come from God. If you get knowledge outside of God, it's not godly knowledge. Let me say that one more time. If you acquire knowledge outside of God, Amen, brother. I see you in the chat room. James, put a one in the chat. I need you to moderate the chat room. Put a one in the chat, brother. Welcome back. It says, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? The doctrine that we preach is the gospel. Why do we preach the gospel? Because this has to do about Jesus Christ, death, burial and resurrection. Why do we preach the doctrine of Christ? The gospel of Christ so those people who are not saved can receive salvation and opportunity to get to know God. Put a one in the chat if you guys understand the assignment. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 to 6. All right. so put this in the chat room moderators. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 to 6. I got to give you all the meat of the word. So we talked about. Those who he teach knowledge and those who he make to understand doctrine is those who are weaned from the milk and are drawn from the breasts. And we see that these people are those who are mature in their faith. All right. So give me a second. I got to pull that up. Hebrews chapter six. Look what he says. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on unto perfection not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptism and of laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. See, these are the doctrines. These are the basic doctrines. I'm going to read it one more time. It says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on to perfection, to leave the, print, the basics and go into maturity is the meat of the word. Yes, you need to learn about um, laying laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works. So repentance from dead works is a doctrine that's elementary. 
right? Uh, and of faith towards God. You haven't believed in trusting in God. How did you get into faith? You had to believe that Jesus Christ is God, right? You had to believe that he was born of a virgin birth, that he died and he was buried and he rose again. That is elementary, right? That is the milk. Okay, let's look at this. Of doctrines of baptism, you're told to go get a water baptism. Not that because a water baptism saves you, but you get a water baptism in obedience to your faith and your confession of who you believe in, which is supposed to be Jesus Christ, right? So if you say, I believe in Jesus Christ to be the son of God, then you must be obedient to the instructions of Jesus Christ through an apostle, through a pastor or a teacher, someone who's trying to lead you to Christ. So if they tell you, okay, repent, be baptized, every single one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, then you will what? receive the Holy Ghost as promised. So in order for you to receive the Holy Ghost, you must believe that Jesus Christ is God. So these are elementary teachings, right? It says of doctrines of baptism and of laying on of hands. So that's deliverance. A lot of you guys all need a deliverance, but what happens after you get a demon cast out of you? You must surrender your life to God. You can't ask someone to pray for you. Hey man, I need you to cast this demon out of me. Right? That person puts hands on you. They pray for you. You get delivered. What did Jesus Christ do in the gospel when he had to pray for people who had demons on them? What happened when Jesus Christ lays his hand on the sick and those who had issues? He said, your faith has saved you, right? That was one of the things he said. The second thing he said is sin no more. If that person's condition was based off of their sin or the lifestyle of them living in sin, Jesus Christ said, I neither, neither do I accuse you. Sin no more. Remember the woman with adultery? When all the Pharisees were trying to accuse her before God, what did he say? Who's without sin? Cast the first stone. You know that story? Jesus Christ said to the woman, sin no more. So laying on hands, casting devils out, you get back in your right mind. Now you got to, now you're free. You're, you experience salvation, right? Uh, you now know of resurrection of the dead. You know that Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. He is the resurrection. We are, he's the one we have to put our trust and hope in that we can experience the resurrection, right? So he talks about the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. These are basic doctrines. So let's look at verse three. It says, and this we will do if God permits, right? We'll continue to teach these uh doctrines because we know that a lot of people are they don't know god right you know that a lot of people are still in the darkness about who jesus christ is they don't know him personally they might know him through a family member they might know him because somebody dragged them to church but do they really have a relationship with god no right oh i don't know so Let's go back to what we said in verse three. And this we will do if God permits. So God knows who's his and God knows who's not his. God will show mercy to the just and the unjust, to the Greeks and the Jews. He's no respect of any persons. He's all giving us an opportunity to choose him. The choice is up to you. Choose this day which mass you're going to serve. Put a one in the chat if you guys understand the assignment. Now let's look at verse four. This is very important. It says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing that they crucify to themselves the son of God afresh and put them to an open shame. I'm going to read that one more time and we're going to break it down. So it says, for it is impossible for those who are once enlightened. What does it mean to be enlightened? Meaning that you had to know about God. That means you had to experience his goodness. That means you had to go through some type of transformation or some kind of conversion into Christ. Right. When you gave your life to Christ, you received the Holy Ghost. Right. You received the Holy Ghost. Now you must learn the doctrines of Christ. What is everybody else saying in this Bible? They all say the same thing. 
continue in the faith. And it never say once save, always save. I know a lot of us fall into that doctrine of once save, always save. And a lot of you baby Christians fall into that doctrine. That's a dangerous doctrine because what it doesn't, what it does is not make you be accountable for what you do after you get saved. I'm going to say that one more time. What makes once save, always save a dangerous doctrine is that it promotes a sense of lawlessness, a lawlessness, sorry, where you feel because you don't have true maturity and you're not mature yet in your walk with God, you just gave your life to God. You still a babe. You still, you just came out of the world. So you still have worldly tendencies. You still have worldly demeanor. You still have a worldly mindset. That's why you have to renew your mind. Get it now? Put a one in the chat. So if you don't renew your mind, meaning to continue in the doctrine of Christ, continue with the apostles' doctrines, continue to study, to show thyself approved. Just don't be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. Look what he says. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and has tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. So once you receive the Holy Ghost... People say, you can never use the Holy Ghost, brother. But let me go to the Old Testament. We saw King Saul had the Holy Ghost and he lost it. David had to pray to God and say, God, do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Right? And this is before salvation. This is before Jesus Christ came in the flesh as a man. Now, Jesus Christ has opened the door. He, he's opened, he's cut that veil between us and God because our sin is what kept us disconnected from God. And now that we have a connection through Jesus Christ, who's the atonement for our sins, we don't need to use animal sacrifices because Jesus Christ was our ultimate sacrifice. We don't need a, a priest to pray on our behalf because Jesus Christ is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek interceding on our behalf to the Father who's sitting on the throne. So Jesus Christ is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Look at that trinity. Jesus Christ is the Lamb. He's the High Priest who atones for our sins and intercede on behalf of the Father for our sake. And he's also the Father who judges at the last day. So Jesus is all three. Jesus Christ is the Father, Son, Word, which is the word made flesh and the Holy Ghost which dwell in us which we receive as a gift so when he says for it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift once you know who Jesus Christ is well I'm helping you out brother I'm glad you're here listen to this brother just keep watching if you got any more questions I'll answer it later but I just want to get through this real quick just put your ones in the chat for now look at this it says for those who tasted of the heavenly gift. What is the heavenly gift? Christ. He said, I am the bread of life. Whoever eat of me will have what? Eternal life. What does it mean to eat of Christ? What does it mean to drink of Christ? What does it mean to be a partaker? To believe in him and trust in him and follow him. Put a one in the chat to say, hey, Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. And why is it important for us to believe that Jesus Christ is God? He says, without believing it, he is God, you cannot be saved. You cannot save yourself. Your works cannot save you. That's why the law could not save us. When you were studying the Old Testament Torah, the law, the law was a schoolmaster to tell us how to live, how to operate, how to be. That's like how you got kids. You got to train your kids up, right? This, this, this is just a perfect example. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is an example. Your child, your parents got to tell you when to go to bed. Your parents got to tell you when to get up. Your parents got to tell you when to go to school, how to dress when you go to school, how to talk when, you at, when you're in front of people. That's how the law of God is for those who are in lawlessness. The reason why the humanity needed laws is because they're lawless. Right? So what is the purpose of the law? The law is a schoolmaster, a tutor, a guide. To keep us in check until the perfect one comes or is revealed. The perfect one who is revealed is that prophet. Who's that prophet that Moses was talking about at Mount Sinai? He's talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is that prophet. Capital P. Not the prophets. The prophet of all prophets. Jesus Christ. The word made flesh is the prophet of all prophets. 
when you believe in the prophet of all prophets, the son of man, the son of David, Jesus Christ, right? Born of a virgin birth. If you believe in him that he is God made flesh, you will be saved. Put a one in the chat. You don't believe that he isn't. If you believe that he's not God, then you cannot be saved. Your goodness can't save you. Your righteousness can't save you. Because what did Jesus Christ say in the gospel? He said your righteousness is what? Rags to God. You can't save you. That's why you needed a savior. So the law was only a foreshadowing to till the savior come, which is Christ. Christ is what? The end of the law to righteousness. So Christ is the end result of all righteousness. Christ is the perfect example of what the law looks like in the flesh. So if the flesh was weak, that it could not fulfill the flat, um, the law of Moses. Think about it. Moses, everybody else who followed that law, they all failed in it. You cannot keep that law because you are not perfect. You needed someone who had no sin, who was perfect, who became flesh to fulfill the law of God in the flesh to show us an example. Just like if you read, let's give you an example. Let's say you're going to prepare for a driving test. First, you need your permit book, right? So you got to read the permit book and the permit book tells you how to obtain a license, right? So it tells you what stop signs look like. It tells you all the um, highway signs to look out for. It tells you how to properly turn a car and all that. See, that's the instruction manual. But the instruction manual cannot save you on the driver's test because you need to have actual experience. You need somebody to show you, a driver instructor to show you how to properly turn the car on. Because you can't use a driver's manual while you're driving the car. It, it doesn't work. You see what I'm saying? So look at it like this with the law. The law of God is like a driver's manual teaching you how to drive a car properly. It's going to give you all the rules and regulations, all the do's and don'ts. But you still need a driver instructor to instruct you on how to properly drive that car. But let's look at the driver instructors as all the prophets that came of the Old Testament that came to warn you guys or try to show you guys like Moses, Aaron, all these other guys how to live righteous. But they themselves don't have perfect righteousness. So they cannot properly show you the perfect way of how to drive this vehicle. So you had to wait until the perfect instructor, the one who created the law, the one who written the law, become flesh, which was Jesus Christ, right? He showed us how to properly fulfill the law. That's why it says Christ is the end of the law to righteousness to all those who believe in him. Put a one in the chat, brothers and sisters. You understand this sign? So when Jesus Christ showed us in the gospels, how to love one another, how to serve one another. When he says, thou should not commit adultery, he's like, remember when the word says, thou should not commit adultery, but I say unto you, see, he didn't uh, contradict his word. He's adding and he's giving you more understanding of what he meant by thou should not commit adultery, right? He says, but I say unto you, if a man looked at the woman in his heart or lusted at the woman in his heart, he's already committed adultery. Remember I said, thou should not steal or thou should not kill. But I told you, if you call your brother a fool, you in danger of hellfire. So if you even have a hateful thought towards your brother or your sister, you're already a murderer. You didn't have to physically do it. So what Jesus came down in the flesh to do is to expound on the law. And to give us a perfect example of how to fulfill the law, not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Right? So put a one in the chat, brothers and sisters, if you understand the assignment. So when Jesus Christ instructed us on how to perfectly live, that's why going forward into the epistles, Paul starts to expound on the gospels, on the Old Testament, on the law of, the pro on the law of Moses and the prophets. He starts to give you more revelation. This is the freedom that we have in Christ. This is the free. He's showing us the freedom. But what do we do with freedom if we was a slave to sin? Do we go back to sin? Do we, get, do we become entangled in the same thing that God has delivered us from? Or do we 
gear ourselves in a whole new direction because a whole new pathway is being opened up to all of us, right? Whoever's watching this video, you gave your life to God. Jesus Christ said, you have been forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Your debt has been paid. Sin no more. But if sin is all you know, because sin was what you came out of, you're going to naturally go back to sin if you don't renew your mind in the ways, in the thinking of God. So this is where repentance is not a one-time thing. Oh God, I'm sorry. I repent. I'm a sinner. It goes beyond the sinner's prayer. Repentance is a lifestyle. That's why John the Baptist said you must produce fruit unto what? Repentance. What is fruit unto repentance? Fruit unto repentance is the fruit of the spirit, which we can find in Galatians chapter 5. And we can go there real quick. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 24. Look what it says. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, Faith. Faith is a fruit. You, the first fruit that you had to show is belief in God. Belief in Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ is what? God. That's, your, that's the seed. You planted a seed of faith, you must produce a tree of, of life. So what God is looking for when he comes back in the second coming, he's looking for a tree that bears fruit of his nature. Not not a, a, a fruit that bears a different kind of fruit. He's like, if I planted a seed, that's like if I plant a watermelon seed in the ground. Yeah, it's going to take time for that watermelon seed to grow in the ground and grow into a watermelon tree and harvest. But if somebody else planted another seed of another kind in the ground, and I'm expecting um, watermelon, but I end up seeing a, 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 a vine of grapes. I'm like, where's my watermelon? I thought I planet watermelon here so when jesus christ comes back he has to see jesus christ in you the fruits of christ should be in you which is the fruit of the spirit love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness meekness means humility right um temperance temperance is self-control control your tongue control your eyes control what you hear control how you feel that's temperance control when you was in the world, you had no self-control. Every single word that came out your mouth was the F word, the B word. You didn't have no control over that. Yes, every one of us needs self-control. But how do we get self-control? We can only have self-control through the power of the Holy Ghost. This is how you know you have the power of the Holy Ghost. When you start to exercise self-control. You cannot control your tongue. The Holy Spirit has to control your tongue for you, but you have to yield control over to God. How do we yield control over to God? Deny yourself. Deny yourself. How, what do you mean, Neil? Deny yourself. You have to die to you so that he can be exalted. The son of man must be lifted up. The son of man must increase. Meaning, as you continue to fellowship with God, as you continue to walk with God, God must increase in your life. You must decrease in how you expect things to be. So you must die to your expectations. You must die to your will. You must die to your desires of your flesh. That means the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and what? The pride of life. These things are not of the Father, but it's of the devil. It's of the world. So you have to die to your worldly ways. That's what I'm basically trying to say. That's not an overnight process. That is, that, that's a lifelong process. I'm still going through it right now. Your flesh is going to mess up. Your flesh has to be tamed. It has to be trained. Just like how you raise a stallion, a horse. You have to train and groom that horse. Some, some horses are like mules. They're stubborn. Your, your flesh is stubborn. It doesn't want to do God's will. It cannot do God's will. If you read Romans chapter 8. Right. Romans chapter eight, verses seven and eight says those it says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be so that these are in the flesh. Listen to that. So that these are in the flesh cannot please God in order to please God. You must have what faith. How do you get faith? Faith is God's nature. 
So you even need God to put faith in you to even have faith. It says, no man can come to me. And this is John chapter six, verse 44. He says, no man can come to me. And I've written these down as his notes. So I'm gonna go there real quick. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. He said, uh, I gotta go back to my notes, but it'll come back. It'll say, um, no man can come to me unless the father who has sent me draw him. What does he mean by this? No man can come to me, meaning no man has any desire to want to serve God, want to please God, want to do right by God because they are not of God. So in order for you to be doing God's will, you have to be born again of the spirit. But how do you get the spirit? You have to be born again. That means you have to believe in Jesus Christ that he is God. That he did die for your sins. You have to come to the realization that you are a what? Sinner. How many people think that they're right in their own eyes? How many people think they'll never do, they never did nobody wrong? They don't ever have an evil thought or, or evil desire. If you one of these people that's watching this video, I'm talking to you. If you cannot come to terms that you are you are not perfect, you are not God, you are a sinner, and you will go to hell, not because of anything you do good. You're going to hell because of your nature. God is holy. He says, without holiness, no one will see him. So when he says, no man can come to me unless the Father, which is spirit, draws him to me, the Holy Spirit has to draw you to salvation. So even before you even watch this video, you are, you are naturally, your flesh will make you naturally scroll past this video because I'm talking about Jesus. You might scroll on this video and say, hey, what are you talking about? Are you talking about Jesus? I don't want to watch that. Next video. And the next video might be something worldly. But what's keeping you here is not you. You think you keeping you here. You're like, I brought myself here. No, you didn't. I'm going to ask you that question one more time. What brought you here? Is it you or is it God? Put your, one in the ch put your answers in the comment section. Is it you or God? Who brought you here? Put your answers in the comment section. You said Jesus. Okay, let me see another person put it in the chat room. I see the ones, but I want the actual answer. Um, say, you said Allah, wrong answer. Wrong answer. Jesus is the answer. Allah is a whole different God. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm just giving you that correction because I want you to understand. So it's okay to make mistakes. I'm not getting at you for that. Jesus Christ brought you here, not Allah. Allah is a whole nother God. That's that's Satan. And we could get that's a whole nother topic. I'm not gonna get into that because that's cutting into my topic. But um Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ, the Father is Jesus Christ, the Son is Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? So whoever said Jesus Christ, that's the correct answer. If you didn't say Jesus Christ, that's okay. You're learning. That's what we're here to do. We're here to learn. Not here to condemn you or make you feel bad because you got the wrong answers. Okay. God brought you here. Which God though? Jesus Christ. You see, he thought, he said, when I say God, most people are like, okay, whatever God that comes to their mind. But most people already know Jesus Christ. They just don't want to say the name. So they all oh, love God. No, it's not about uh God. God is a title. What's the name of that God? Jehovah, Yahweh, Jesus Christ. Allah is a totally different God. That's a whole different religion. That's a whole different system. See what I'm saying? And even if they say Allah means God, that's not what it means. If you line that up with scripture, don't mix. If you talk about another Jesus Christ that does not line up with the gospel of Jesus Christ, does not line up with the Bible, we talking about the biblical Jesus Christ, not talking about um, New Age Jesus Christ, where they talk about Jesus is a hippie or Jesus is a ascended master. Jesus was just a man. No, you got the wrong Jesus. Sorry, just being real with you, you got the wrong Jesus. So the Holy Spirit draws you. He says, no man can come to me unless the Father whose Spirit draws you to him. 
So the Holy Spirit is facilitating. He's in control of your whole salvation process from beginning to the end. Put a one in the chat if you understand the assignment. This is why I could, I understand when you guys, when you come in with the one save over save doctrine, you know that, okay, Jesus is in control of everything. That is true. But also Jesus gives us free will too. Yes, Jesus Christ is in control of everything. But he also gives us free will. Why does God give us free will? God gives us free will because if he doesn't give us free will and certain choices, then it wouldn't be love. He said, I first love you. You didn't love me back. You are incapable of loving me because of my nature. My nature is holiness. Your nature is not holy. To, to, for you to be, even be in my presence, you have to be like me. And right now, in the state that you're in, and in, in the condition that you're in, you're unholy, you're unrighteous, you're unjust. And I need you to come to the truth of your nature. Your nature is evil. And I know you're going to get offended when I say that you're evil. That's why it says the world hates me because I testify of its works being evil. I came on to my own and my, my own did not receive me. Starting to ring a bell now. Why did Jesus Christ say a prophet's not receiving his own town? If the world hates you, know that they hated me first. Why? Because anyone who's born again of the word and of the spirit will be despised by the world because the world love its own because the world is of a different spirit. The worldly spirit is the spirit of the Antichrist which is the spirit of error, the spirit of bondage. So when you give your life to Christ and believe that Jesus Christ is God, and you believe on the word of his son, the gospel, right? You are now, tra you are now transformed from death to life. This is not a physical thing yet, but it starts spiritual first. So the seed is a spiritual seed. So the receiving of the Holy Ghost is that spiritual seed of faith that you believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. So when you when somebody tells you to go get a water baptism, right? We're not telling you to, oh, get a water baptism in order to believe. Listen very closely, people. I, if I tell you go get a water baptism, I'm not telling you to get a water baptism in order to believe Jesus Christ is God. You should already believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he is before attempting to get a water baptism. Because if you go get a water baptism in, in order to receive the Holy Spirit, but you didn't believe that he is God. It's, um, it's based off of unbelief and then you're going to feel like, oh, I didn't do it right. So I got to do it over again. And every time I mess up, I got to keep getting a water baptism. That is religion. That is what? Dead works. We only do a water baptism because we believe. You see what I'm saying? I, I only got a baptism at the age of 20, not because I want to believe in Jesus Christ. It's because I was convicted that he is God. And I had the desire to give my life to God. So the desire had to come from God, not me. Because he says, no man can come to me unless the father who sent me draw him. And the way how God draws you is giving you the desire to change your life. Giving you the desire to surrender. To give you the desire to want to seek him out. He has to put that desire in you. You naturally don't have that desire in you. Before I gave my life to Christ, I was in drugs. I was in drug programs. I was wilding out. I was in fornication. God was the furthest thing from my mind. God had to put his presence in my mind. God had to put his desire in my mind. So before I even received the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was already working on me. You get it now? So you watching this video, that means he's already working with you. You just don't, just because you're not hearing from that doesn't mean that he's not working with you. The simple fact that you're even watching me talk about Jesus is a testament to what the Holy Spirit is doing with you right now. So when you do confess that Jesus Christ is God, you will receive the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, now you must act in obedience to the instructions of the Holy Spirit based on somebody who's preaching a word to you saying, oh, okay. Go get a water baptism. Go set up a baptism. Go call a church, a Baptist, Pentecostal, Calvinist, or 
non-denominational Christian church, go to a, a fellowship with somebody at that church, ask them, can you give me a water baptism? I would like to give my life to Christ. And when you do, what is asked of you in faith, that's how you receive the Holy Spirit. You don't do it in order to believe. You do it because you already believe. When you go out there and fornicate, when you go out there and use drugs, do you do that in order to believe that you had sex? And you, or, or do you do it because you already know and you already believe? <laughs> you do it because you already believe. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You don't do it to try to believe. You do it because you love it, you know it, and that's part of who you are. You don't got a second guess. Sinners don't got a second guess sin because sin is who they are. But you see, righteousness is not who you are. So that's why you struggle with righteousness because you're not righteous. So that's the simple fact that you struggle reading your Bible. The simple fact you struggle understanding God's ways, that means you are far from it. You are not it. And anything that you think in your head about being righteous, it's far from the mark. So what is sin? To miss the mark. So when, when you sin against God is to miss his standard of what he wants you to do. Or to miss the standard of his, of his rules or his laws. So when you break his law, it's to miss the mark. If you kill your brother when the Bible says thou shall not kill, you miss the mark. You sinned. Understand? If the Bible says thou shall not commit adultery... But you lusting after your neighbor's wife or husband. You sleeping around cheating on your spouse. You missed the mark. And somewhere along the line, the reason why you missed the mark is because your understanding is not renewed in the ways of God. You do not know the ways of God. So, yes, giving your life to God is step one. You receiving the Holy Spirit, step two. Step three, you must fellowship with other believers and you must fellowship with God every single day. The Bible tells you and commands you to study, to show thyself approved. Even if you can't go to a church right now and you just a few people, one or two brothers as Christian and sisters, you need to fellowship and build your utmost faith. It says when two or more come together in my name, I'm in the midst of them. Because God is spirit. Let's keep reading. I know I was supposed to get into my notes. I just feel like the Holy Spirit wanted me to like really hammer that home with you guys with the milk. Now we're going to get past the elementary teaching. Let's get into the meat. All right. We read Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 to 6. We talked about that once saved, always saved. It's false. You must continue to abide in Christ. You must continue to fellowship with Christ. He says man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of what? God. So as long as you living by his word, not just being a hearer of the word saying amen. I don't need your amens. I need you to be obedient in faith to the instructions that are given to you today and not be forgetful hearers of the word but doers constantly doing whatever you heard today put into practice oh he told me to read my bible i haven't read my bible in a long time so you know what i'm gonna do after i get off this video read my bible i mean i know what scripture to read but i'm gonna start somewhere i can start with genesis or i can start with one of the stories in the gospel or i just let the holy spirit lead me to a page which he want me to read but let me get started reading let me not be asking men all the time, what should I do, Neil? What should I do, Neil? I'm not God. <laughs> talk to God just like how you're talking to me. He's in the room. Just because you can't see him doesn't mean he's not there. He says he's in the midst of you. God is what? Spirit. The true worshiper shall worship him in what? Spirit and truth. The same voice that's speaking in your head, do not sin. Do not steal that conscience that's convicting you to do right. That's God already speaking to you right there. You didn't even need me to tell you what to do and not to do. He's been telling you what to do and not to do. Just be still. Listen to the voice on the inside. Listen to that conviction that's telling you, you know what that brother is saying is true. Go read your Bible. Get off of TikTok. Stop watching those videos. Come read Bible. Come fellowship with me. How are you going to know God if you don't fellowship with him? All you know is God through what I'm preaching. 
That's the closest you're getting to God. You're not getting close to God by listening to me. You're getting close to God by reading his word. My job is to point you back to his word, not to point you to me. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 2. Look what he says. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hereunto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet are ye now able. Let's read that one more time. I'm going to break it down from old English to modern English. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. Look what Paul is saying to the Corinthians. He says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. When you give your life to Christ, you are still a babe. You just gave your life to Christ. You said the sinner's prayer. You got a water baptism. You just now learning about the elementary teachers of Christ. You are still carnal. What does it mean to be carnal? Worldly. Look at some of these Christians that come out with Christian rap music. Christian trap music. It's still worldly. Doesn't matter if you're saying Jesus, Jesus on the track. It still has worldliness to it. Why? Because you got beats that are worldly. You have an ele you you have not graduated into maturity where you can discern good and evil yet. You just know, okay, God is good and he saved me and I thank him and amen and he's going to bless us and he's going to rapture us up. That's all y'all care about. But you don't know the ways of God. And, and how could you be in his presence if you don't know his ways? See what I'm saying? So he's like, I, brethren, cannot speak unto you as spiritual. Meaning I couldn't reveal to you greater mysteries of Christ. Why? But I had to talk to you as carnal people, worldly people, because you are still babes in Christ. Verse 2, it says, I have fed you with milk, elementary teachings, repentance from dead works, having faith in God, laying off of hands, talking about baptism. Look at what I taught most of the video. I'm telling you guys how to get saved because I know most of you guys are not saved. You see what I'm saying? Most of you guys, the question that you're asking is questions that a new Christian would ask. You see what I'm saying? And it's not offense. I'm just being honest. You're not ready for the meat yet, but this is why the Lord wants me to talk about this so that you can understand there's levels of teaching in the body of Christ. And as you continue to fellowship with God, he starts to reveal to you the greater revelation of his word. You're like, I read the story of Moses like 12 times. I, I, I already know all it is about Moses. No, you don't. I don't care how much times you read that story. You, you did so much levels of understanding you don't understand. And it does some fact you that you assume that because you read the story of Moses and you read it as a child, you think you understand God. That's an immature mindset to have. You don't know anything at all. So that's the mindset you need to have. I don't care how many times I read this, Lord. I still don't know your word. I need you to feed me. Keep feeding me that revelation. Help me to elevate. Help me to elevate in my carnal ways. Help me to throw away, walk away from youthful lust. Look what he says. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. Higher teachings. For hereunto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet nor ye able. The things that God is asking you guys to do, you're not ready to do it. Some of you guys are not ready to let go of Christmas yet. Some of you guys are not ready to let go of celebrating birthdays and holidays. Y'all still caught up in those holidays because you're still carnal. Higher levels of discipline. Higher levels of discipleship. Right? Footwork Ministries is about discipleship. I'm a disciple of Christ. Right? I don't, I'm not your pastor. I'm a disciple. I'm being discipled. As he's discipling me, whatever he wants me to do. Say to you guys, I say to you guys, and hopefully you follow. But me and my wife, we're under discipleship. You see what I'm saying? When we fellowship, it's discipleship. When two or more come together, that's church, that's ready church for me. And the things that he has us going through is strict. You be like, man, I want to quit. 
the things that he have us going through, you be like, uh, I don't think I want, I don't think, I think I signed up for the wrong camp. But this is about discipleship. Why do you think out of the multitudes of people who Jesus Christ was feeding the loaves and the fishes to? He didn't run them away. He was teaching them and he fed them. But look at the multitudes as an example of those who were on the milk. The multitudes who were fed the five fishes and loaves of bread, they represent the, the, the people who are always going to church on Sunday. They're like, amen. Amen for the fishes and the loaves of bread. <laughs> we good with that. Every Sunday, we just want a little loaf. We don't want more of you, God. We just want that little bit. So when God starts saying harder teachings, see now he's like, okay, I want you to transition from milk to meat. Whoever follow me must deny himself. You must hate father, mother, daughter, uh, wife, husband, and even your own life. If you, if you love them more than me, you're not fit to be my disciples. Oh my gosh, God, that's a hard saying. Unsubscribe. <laughs> um... You must eat of my flesh, drink of my blood. I, 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 no, no, no. What you talking about? Uh, unsubscribe. He was left down to 70 disciples. And amongst the 70 disciples, he had only 12. And one of them was a devil. <laughs> he was down to 12 disciples. Say, will you guys leave as well? What did um, Peter say? Where will we go, Lord? <laughs> we already left our families. We left our homes. Peter was a married man. He left his wife. He left his fishing job just to be on the road with Jesus, to be his disciple for the three years. Look at the hell they had to go through. So if you think you won't get blessed with power, if you think you're going to walk around here doing miracles, casting out devils, and you're not going to have to sacrifice, who lied to you? Stop listening to these um, mega preachers telling you, claim it and name it. This prosperity gospel, once saved, always saved nonsense. All y'all got, got a good gift to get, but y'all don't got no power to cast out devils, nor you don't have no sense of holiness in you. Sanctification is the next step after baptism. So once you receive uh, water baptism and you receive the Holy Spirit, then comes discipleship. God has to prune you. God has to, to tear, your, tear your ego down. He has to tear your pride down. It says God chasing those who he what? Love. So if, he, if you say you love God, expect that he's going to chasten you. And that's not going to be easy. He's going to correct you for everything you do. You're going to be like, God, I feel like I'm walking on eggshells now. That's the point. Discipline. He's teaching you his ways versus the ways of the world. It says, love not the things of the world. If you, a Christian, is still loving the world, you still want to go out and party, you still want to go on dating apps, or you still want to be around your friends that's still worldly, but, and you're a Christian, you have a choice to make. God's not going to make that choice for you. Yes, I died on the cross for your sins. Yes, I saved you. Yes, I told you to sin no more, but you still have that choice to make. Choose this day which master you're going to serve. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. We're not keeping his commandments as a form of religion. See, that goes back to the Old Testament. You think by keeping a couple of days and Sabbaths and all of that, right? We talked about that in the previous video a while back. Talked about feast days and holidays and all those things. When we're learning to deny ourselves, we're learning to put our trust in God. Instead of putting you first, you put him first. Instead of you deciding what you're going to do today, you tell God or you pray to God, say, God, this is what I want to do. But what do you want me to do? And you be obedient to whatever God is telling you to do. And expect that whatever God tells you to do will always go against what you want to do. And that's what you got to learn in discipleship. Discipleship, okay, God's ways is not my ways. He's always telling me to deny myself. And if, even if he agrees to what I'm telling him, he's going to want me to do it in a way that I'm not used to. So even if he agrees with you to be around certain individuals, like, okay, he, he agrees, okay, hit up your family member. But this is what I want you to say. I don't want you saying that. I want you saying this. You're like, God, but I want to say it this way. 
that's the test. Are you going to do it? Are you going to do what he says in obedience because you love him? Or are you going to keep living in disobedience? See, that's how we're being trained right now. And this is why I want to share with you guys and sisters in the body of Christ. Discipleship is different from fellowship. Discipleship and fellowship, this is something God was revealing to me. When everybody was coming to the to the, the multitudes was coming to eat, that's an assembly. Everybody's trying to get that word. Everybody come to church on Sunday with their suits and their ties on and their best dress. But the what what about the rest of the week? What about what how much time are you spending on TikTok? And how much time are you spending with God? That's something that you need to individually look at. Look at the time on the TikTok, because TikTok can tell you how much time you're spending on it. When you go to your watch history, it shows you how many hours you have been on there. If you see that you've been there for 20 something hours, almost a whole day worth, that could have been a whole day reading your Bible. So you got to ask yourself and say, the evidence is not even lying. The TikTok is telling on y'all. Hey, God, look. You look at your sir, you say you're a child of God. She says she's a child of God, but look how much hours they've been on this app. This is their God. You have made TikTok your God and TikTok idols and TikTok content creators an idol. You don't even want to go to God and ask him the things that you should need to ask him, but you asking me, a TikTok creator who don't know nothing about your life to help you. <laughs> I can help you only so much and that's and I'm, I'm even restricted to how much I can help you because if God don't even want me to give you a word there's nothing I could do you can say Neil hit me up in the chat room I'm gonna hit you up in the DM I could totally ignore that and you could get pissed off and be mad and be like oh why you didn't hit me up I text you if God didn't want me to respond in that I'm not gonna disobey God to make your flesh happy I have Hundreds of videos that can answer any one of your questions that have to do with the gospel Because I've touched on a lot of topics. I feel like I'm repeating myself at this point Let's move on to the meat. So he says I have fed you with milk and not with meat For here on to you are not able to bear it because the more you elevate in God He's gonna require a sacrifice. The sacrifice is not like in the Old Testament Right? Where you had to sacrifice goats and calves. Because you already have a sacrifice. Jesus Christ is the atonement for your sins. You don't need another sacrifice. That's going back into old, old Levitical priesthood laws. That's done away with. The sacrifice is your body. Your body is what? The temple of the Holy Ghost. Which temples you are. That's why he tells you to abstain from what? Fornication. And to what? Flee from idolatry. Because idolatry and fornication are synonymous. They go hand in hand. Your idols, like your favorite celebrities, your pop stars, your rappers, your singers, your, your politicians, whoever. Whoever you idolize, that's who God's going to tell you to walk away from. He's going to tell you to walk away from people, places, and things. Let's keep reading. Let's go to, Hebrew, let's go to Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 to 14. Got to give you this meat, bro. Um, let's go to Hebrews chapter 5 Look what he says Bam 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 Chapter 12 it says For when for the time ye ought to be teachers you, need, you have need that one teacher you again Which be the first principles of the oracles of God Let me read that one more time Hebrews chapter 5 verses 12 to 14 It says For when for the time ye ought to be teachers Ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracle of God, and are become such as need of milk and not of strong meat. If you constantly need somebody to repeat to you baptism, laying on of hands, eternal judgment, resurrection of the dead, always talking about the same topics every single Sunday, you are not maturing in your walk with God. How many years have you guys been going to the same church, hearing the same message, and you are not growing? Your growth is not dependent on your pastor. Your growth is dependent on you. Because you're going to have to answer to God on Judgment Day 
on why you wasted all that time. You was a hearer, but not a doer, or a doer and not a hearer. You gotta do both. You gotta be able to hear and to hear clearly. Don't misunderstand. Be slow to speak. Remember when Paul said be slow to speak, quick to listen. Instead of you jumping at every single uh, thing that you hear, like, oh, I heard this and God told me to say this. Let's chill out with that. Hear. Slow to speak. Confirm that is with God. God, that sounds nice, but I want to know if that's coming from you. You see what I'm saying? Hold on a second. You'd be like, God, I want to know if that's coming from you. Right? At some point, you got to know when God is speaking to you versus when um, the enemy is speaking to you. Sometimes it be difficult. I'm not going to lie because I still go through that. But you got to get to a level with God where you know his voice. That's why he says, my sheep know the sound of my voice. A stranger will not follow. And how do you get to know God's voice so clear? You can't always be listening to me. I'm going to say that one more time. I know you guys watch my videos and say amen. But if God wants you to stop watching my videos, you got to be obedient to that too. I understand. I, there's no love lost if you got to unsubscribe. Do what you got to do. i rather you elevate than to not elevate. And then y'all want to blame me like, oh, you didn't say do this. Like, nah, I'm telling you, it's okay. Get what you can from my page. Whatever the Lord is using you, losing me to tell you, okay, go to the videos. That's what the archive is up there. A lot of information. Get the information that you need, but just don't be a hearer of the word, binge watching the video. You need to be a doer. Because, see, when you're not doing, you're not growing. You're just hearing. You're just observing. You're just absorbing information. That's what TikTok has got y'all doing. TikTok has got y'all absorbing countless of information from different sources. Different sources mean different spirits. You think because they talking about Jesus, they're in the right spirit? Why do you think the Bible says test every spirit? If you read in your word every single day, it'll be easier for you to discern God's spirit on an individual. Whether they say Jesus, Jesus, they preaching loud, they got you clapping. You are like, nah, that's cat. <laughs> He's biblically unsound. That's not biblically sound. It doesn't matter how uh, magnificent the theatrics are. That's off. You just know. That's all. He said everything right except for that. I can't even agree with that. Just throw away the whole message. That's how you need to be. That's a mature Christian. So when he says, uh, for when... The time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need of one that teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracle of God. The elementary teaching, right? And have become such of need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Let me say that one more time, right? For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So if you're still on the milk... And not elevating into the meat of the word, you're still a babe because you're unskillful in the ways of righteousness. All right, give me a second. All right, so let's go to uh, verse 14. It says, But strong meat belonging to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Read verse 14 one more time. But strong meat belonging to them that are of full age. What does it mean to come into full age of your maturity in Christ? Constant fellowshipping with God. Coming into the full age of the gestation period. The full age of maturity. The fruits are ripe. The fruits are ripe. Right now a lot of you guys are just building fruit. Some of you guys don't even have fruit. You just planted a seed. You got you to gotta grow in righteousness. See, the, the ways of the world is different from the ways of God. The ways of the world had you growing in unrighteousness. So you were growing fruits unto death. 
It says the wages of sin is what? Death. So the works of the flesh is the fruit of the flesh. Adultery, fornication, lying, stealing, murder, scandalous things. So what is Satan indoctrinating you guys with? He's initiating you into death. Everything that Satan promotes in the world is initiating a spirit of death and decay and fornication and perversion. See, it starts off with the corn. Then it doesn't end with the corn. It ends off with uh, changing your sex. And then it goes to touching kids. And then it goes to bestiality. And then it goes to want to have sex with angels. And see, when it gets to that level... God got to destroy the nations. Why do you think God was destroying the world with a flood? Why did he destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Because see, unrighteousness start off with a little seed. Just like faith starts off with a little seed. The, the seed of Satan, which is sin. He said he's the father of lies. He is a murderer. The truth never aboded in him. Everybody who is born in sin is born of the seed of Satan. That's why you have to be what? Born again. You understand? If you're not born again, but you're just born, you're born of sin. You of Adam. The fallen nature of Adam is sin. When Adam sinned, he doesn't infect himself and Eve. He affected all generation. Every single human that's born in this world is born in with a sin nature that has to be destroyed by being born again of the nature of God. See, God said, I am from above. Year from beneath. You have to be, to be born again means to be born from above. That's why the world will hate you when you turn your life to being, when you turn your life to Christ. That's why he says the world will hate you because you're now born from above. They're still from below. So when you start speaking to somebody who's carnal, when you are a spiritual person, they don't miss, they misunderstand your speech. That's why Jesus was speaking to the multitudes in parables, but to his disciples who he was discipling, he was speaking to them the mysteries of the king. He says, for you guys to know the mysteries, for them, I speak to them in dark sentences. That when they hear, they cannot hear. When they see, they cannot see because they're in unbelief. So when Jesus Christ said, no man can come to me, that is true because they're born from beneath. He's born from above. Those who hear his word and obey his word are those who have the Holy Spirit in them. And the spirit bear witness with their spirit that they are what? Children of God. So if you receive the message and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that means the witness who's the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. Understand the assignment? Put a one in the chat. You understand the assignment. So when you do what God needs you to do, you can only do what God needs you to do because you are born from above. He says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. An unbeliever does not have faith in God. He has faith in man. Let me, let me, let me, let me say that one more time. An unbeliever, a worldly man, a carnal person, a worldly person does not have faith in God because they cannot see God. God is spirit. Your whole faith is based on believing in something that you cannot see. Your, your whole life has to be directed by someone who you cannot see. Right? You have to put your trust in Christ that he is guiding every step of the way. Don't tell me what to say, my friend. You're getting blocked. All right? Just letting you know that. I'm not calling him the Yahweh Shai, all that. You can miss me with all that. All right? His name is Jesus Christ. And we're going to leave it at that. Have a good day. All right? So look what he says. But strong meat belonging to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. I'm going to give you a revelation that the Lord revealed to me earlier. Think about playing video games, right? Video games have um, ratings, like the ratings would be E for everyone, T for teens, M for mature, right? So, E for everyone means it doesn't have profanity in it. Everybody can use that, right? It has limited to no profanity. None of that. 
It still have evil things in it, but uh, it's for everyone, right? That's how the games get you. They get you with E for everyone, T for teens. So when you got to play games that got to do with teens, they got a little bit of cursing in it. They got a little bit of violence in it. <laughs> a, a lot of violence in it, but no blood. Maturity. Games that are mature has all the evil in it. All the evil debauchery. So look at how you are being initiated through Satan's system through the E ratings. E for everyone. T for teens. M for mature. Your fruits are now mature to do all the evil that you want to do. Look at Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto, you could sleep with prostitutes. You could kill somebody. You could commit thief. Murder what it commits, it goes against every commandment in the Bible. The name itself, Grand Theft Auto. But you will send your kids to go get a game that contradicts the word. And you a Christian man and Christian woman watching this video. We're all guilty of that. I used to play Grand Theft Auto. Don't get it twisted. God had to correct me and get me off of the game. But he revealed to me the revelation of this. When you ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you were initiated into doing evil. So you're mature in your mindset when it comes to doing evil, but you're a babe when it comes to doing righteousness. I hope y'all caught that one. When it comes to doing right, you are a babe. You're unskilled in the words of righteousness. But when it comes to doing evil and slandering and cursing and adultery and sex and fornication and all the evil things, you know about all the guns, you know all the type of guns they use and kill person, you're very mature in that. But you see, when you're born again, let's look at this revelation. Now flip the script. You need to be mature and rated when it comes to the word of righteousness and not E-rated when it comes to righteousness. You need, you need, to, be, you need to be a babe when it comes to evil and be a man or woman when it comes to righteousness. See, that's the kingdom way. See, God ain't coming back for a child. He's coming back for a mature adult. So all you dudes and sisters that want to get raptured, you better mature your fruits onto repentance. You better mature from a child to an adult in the ways of God. God is marrying a bride. The bride is not a, a child. It's a woman who is mature in the ways of God and is serving God in spirit and in truth. And if we're called the bride of Christ, which bride you are, you are the temple of God, which temples you are, you must not entertain the things of this world. I'll give you scripture. Look what he says. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. And this is new... Um, New Living Translation. I didn't want to use the King James because I don't understand the old English like that with this part. But this is perfect. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 20. New Living Translation version. Right? So it says, uh, Dear brothers and sisters, do not be childish in your understanding of these things. Be innocent as babes when it comes to evil, but be mature in understanding matters of this kind. I'm going to say that one more time. Dear brothers and sisters, do not be childish in your understanding of these things. Be innocent as babes when it comes to evil, but be mature in understanding matters of this kind. Right? Understanding the ways of God. Be mature in that. When it, when it comes to evil, don't be so quick to run out and do evil. Don't be so quick to act on impulses. Don't be so quick to uh, speak profanity out your mouth. Don't be so quick to be un unforgiving, unloving, unkind, unmerciful. That is not of God. You have to die to those things and be born in the things of God. Now, Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, this is going to line up with 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. Look what he says. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Look at that comparison. Behold, I send you for a sheep. We are called sheep. We're not called goats. So why are you calling yourself a goat? Those people are like, oh, LeBron, James, and Drake, they're the goat. I'm the goat. If you're a goat, then you're not of God. 
can't be a, you can't be a sheep and a goat. You can either be one or both, of one or the other. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. The wolves is the world, right? Be ye therefore wise as serpents. You have to have maturity. That's what this means. Be mature in understanding good and evil. Be wise as serpents, but innocent as babes when it comes to evil, harmless as what? Doves. So look at that comparison. Jesus said, be wise as serpents, be mature in your understanding when it comes to holiness and righteousness and serving God and loving one another, but be innocent as babes when it comes to doing evil, harmless as doves. Put a one in the chat if you guys understand the assignment. You guys got to step it up. All right. Uh, Hebrew, I think it was Hebrews. Uh, bam, bam, bam. John chapter 4. We're going to wrap this up. John chapter 4, verses 33 to 34. It says, Therefore said the disciples unto, him, unto another, Has any man brought him ought to eat? And Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. I'm going to read that one more time. John chapter 4 verses 33 to 34. He says, Therefore said the disciples to one another, one to another, Has any man brought him ought to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to what? Finish his work. So the meat of Jesus Christ is not literal food. It's, it's spiritual. Right? Because they asking him, do you got something to eat? No, my, my meat is to do the Father's will. My food, my diet is to do His will. So what does this mean in the spiritual contents? As you graduate from milk to eating strong meat, your meat should be doing God's will, not feeding your belly. See, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. We can find this in Matthew chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. And when the tempter come to him, he said, If thou be the son of God, command these stones be made bread. See, Satan trying to tempt Jesus in the wilderness. He says, If thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But look at Jesus' response. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. And look at John chapter 4, verses 34. Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to what? Finish his work. So whatever God has commanded us to do, that's our meat. That's our spiritual diet. Be baptized. Repent. Be born again. Preach the gospel. Love one another. Keep his commandments. That is the will. That is the meat. If you love me. You say amen, brother. But if you love me, keep my commandments. Do not just be a hearer of the word, deceiving yourself, but be ye a doer of the word. Because when you do the will of my Father who are in heaven, you will be rewarded tenfold. Put a one in the chat. If you guys understand the sign, all that noise upstairs. If you guys put your fleshly needs to the side, your carnal desires, oh, I want to get married, I want to get a wife, I want to get a husband, it's not about that. If God wants to give you a wife or a husband, it's not going to go the way you think anyway. When God gave me my wife, it didn't go the way that I was planning in my carnal mind. It went the way he wanted because it's for a specific purpose and a reason why he wanted me to have a wife. Because in my fleshly mind, I just wanted to live in fornication. And that's just being honest with y'all. And I was like, God, I don't want a wife if I'm going to defile them. I'm just being straight up. That's my, that was my prayer to God. I said, God, don't bring me no wife if, if, if my intentions ain't good. So when I did get a wife, I knew it was from God because I knew the desires of my flesh was not aligned with God's will. You got to ask yourself, why are you asking God for certain things that are earthly? God said in his word, he said, do not take any thought for your life. Do not take any thought for you, what you eat, what you say, where you go, and where you lay your head. So why are you taking thought for your life every single day? See, the simple fact that you take thought for your life every single day, meaning that you are in control of your life. God is not in control of your life. So what is discipleship really? 
Let's end this off with a bang. What is discipleship really? Discipleship is learning to trust in God and not take any thought for your life. I don't take no thought for where I go. I don't think I don't take any thought for what I will say to somebody if they respond to me in the chat room. I'll talk to God and say, okay, God, this person is writing negative things about me in the chat room. How do you want me to handle that? Don't even answer that. Block, <laughs> delete, <laughs> keep it pushing. Before I would have responded with, oh yeah, I'm looking at that comment section, like, oh yeah, that's what you're trying to say. And that would have took me off of my path of what God wanted me to talk about. This is not about me. This ain't about your personal beef. This is about Jesus Christ. And we're gonna keep the focus on Jesus Christ. So I don't take no thought of how I'm gonna respond. The Holy Spirit will put in me what I need to say. So if I'm supposed to respond to you guys, if you guys have a personal question, that's whatever response come out of my mouth, is exactly what the Father wanted me to say. If there's no response that come out of my mouth, that means the Father didn't want me to say anything pertaining to that. And that's okay. And if you don't understand, hey, Holy Spirit, please help this person to understand your ways. Help them to understand what they're feeling at this time and help them to find the answer what they seek. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's how I handle it. This is a whole new way of handling things versus how I used to handle things because when you handle things being led by your flesh, you're always going to get a fleshly response. You're always going to get a fleshly result. Your tongue needs to be tamed. What you say can hurt somebody. I could be saying something out of my pride and it could affect you. And you could be saying, oh, I thought you was a man of God. Right? If I got to feel I need to defend myself on here, then I don't need to be on here. God defend me. I expect the persecution because I am walking with him. I expect people to disagree because he says the world hates me. The world love his own. So if I'm preaching about Jesus Christ and they hate Jesus Christ, of course, they're going to hate those who Jesus Christ sent in his name. That's just basically it. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I pray that you rewatch this video to get the notes that you guys can need to get. So I want you to do this as homework. So I'm gonna give you guys homework. So I need you to write this down or rewatch this video when it's posted on the YouTube and write this down. I'm not gonna do this for you. I want you guys to do your own stuff. It's nice enough to hear me preach to you guys, but it's very important that you take these instructions and study so you don't be deceived. All right? So Isaiah chapter 28 verses nine to 10, Hebrews chapter six verses one to six, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 1 to 2. I think um, Hebrews chapter 5 verses 12 to 14. Um, Luke chapter 9 verses 23 to 26. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 1 to 2. Matthew chapter 4 verses 3 to 4. John chapter 4 verses 33 to 34. And um, he, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 20. If you have a King James Bible, I suggest you look up other translations because sometimes... The, the King James is very hard to understand. So I look up other translations to see what the other translations say to get a clearer understanding of that scripture for some of you guys that have a hard time reading King James Bible. Matthew chapter 10 verse 16, that connects to that 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 20. That's that, that's that precept right there. All right, so these are my notes that I took in in my time studying with God. I want you to take these notes and study on, with God on your own time and let God reveal to you whatever he chooses to reveal to you. Just don't go off my video and say amen and then go your merry way. You're our, you guys are responsible for whatever you heard today. You must be a doer of the word or your faith is null and void. I'm just going to keep it a buck with you. So let's bow our heads and pray. We thank you, Father God, for using me as that vessel to speak this mighty word on your behalf to the body of Christ this afternoon. I pray that all my brothers and sisters who hear this video and rewatch this video will receive this message in spirit and truth and that they will be convicted to act on this word in faith. You said without faith, Father God, it is impossible to please you. And therefore, we ask for that faith. We ask for that strength. We ask for that motivation. We ask that you put your desires in our hearts to complete the task which you have called us to do. 
in Jesus name. Amen. Put an amen in the chat room, brothers and sisters. You have received the prayer and assignment. Check out the website at www.footworkministries.com. I write blogs and books that the Lord puts on my spirit to write. You guys can read that. They're all free to read and download. If you guys need any um, prayers, if you're new Christ, if you're new to the faith, you never gave your life to Christ. If you want to get the sinner's prayer and you want to give your life to Christ. Hit me up after this video. Hit me up in my DM. Say, hey, Neil, send me the sinner's prayer. I'll send you the sinner's prayer. And I, I want you guys to set up a water baptism at a local Baptist church, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, non-denominational, Calvinist churches. So go on Google. Type that in your area. Google search. Take a list. Write down a bunch of churches and then start calling these churches in faith. And whatever church receive you, that's the church that God wants you to go to. Trust and faith, all right? Um, also, if you're a Christian, not talking to non-Christians, talking to Christians, if you're already a Christian, you already got water baptized, hit me up for the prayer album. I'll send you guys the prayer recordings. If you're not a Christian, I'm not sending you that. You're playing a dangerous game. You cannot ask for deliverance and not give your life to Christ. I'm not responsible for whatever happens to you. So you have been warned. If you're not a Christian, you should be asking for the sinner's prayer. If you're a Christian, you already gave your life to Christ, you should be asking for the prayer album, which I will send to you guys in the DM. So if you're a Christian, you already gave your life to Christ, and you're struggling with warfare, got strongholds, demonic warfare, hit me up for the sinner's, um, not the sinner's prayer, the, the prayer album. I'll send you the link to my SoundCloud, and you guys can check that out. All right? Add me on TikTok, add me on YouTube, add me on Instagram. Add me on Facebook at Neil Aubrey Taylor. It's the same as my TikTok name. And I'll catch you brothers and sisters when the Lord puts me back on here again. Peace.